Amen. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we are beginning a study on Joseph. The next five lessons are going to be on Joseph. Tonight's kind of on the his dreams and being sold into slavery and their uh, kind of treatment of him. And Paul is right that we'll, we're going to look at the uh, feeding of the 5,000 later on. Uh, Stan Green's not with us tonight. He had to take his son back to the airport. So we're going to be... Uh, reading uh, Phil Sanders is going to be reading for us we're blessed to have him read for us and we're going to read Genesis chapter 37 so if you have your Bibles hopefully you can follow along and and I would encourage you to think about how we see God at work and what we learn about people as we read this. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version Jacob lived in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was pasturing the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept the saying in mind. Now his brothers went to pasture their flocks, their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to him, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring me word. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a man found him wandering in the fields, and the man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. And the man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him, and we'll see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he rescued him out of their hands, saying, let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore. And they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. 
with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Then Midianite traders passed by and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes and returned to his brothers and said, the boy is gone and I, where shall I go? Then they took Joseph's robe and slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. And they sent the robe of many colors and brought it to their father and said, this we have found, please identify whether it is your son's robe or not. And he identified it and said, it is my son's robe. A fierce animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. And then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters <clears throat> rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, No, I shall go down to Sheol to my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. Okay. Uh, wow, what a uh, interesting, I want to say story, what an interesting account of kind of what happened. What are some things we learned about God in this passage? Anything stand out to you? Anybody? I think about God's sovereignty uh, and God's plan looking ahead to about Joseph, but certainly the dreams and all of that and the consequences to those dreams because others uh, maybe didn't have quite the, the same ex, uh, perspective from God telling them what to do, but they had to learn as they went along that what God says, what God declares, what God plans, uh, even if it's in this dream, it's still God's plan. And, uh, you know, we might become jealous. We might become uh, just different emotions. And yet we need to recognize whether it's God's plan or not. Uh, certainly, there was some favoritism in that family. Good work and talk. And uh, Joseph really uh, was treated pretty special. Uh, I don't know about in your family. I'm the youngest of three boys. So sometimes the, the babies in the family get to be treated really well. And others become jealous at times. But part, part of it is just family dynamics, whatever you want to put into it. But there was a lot of jealousy there. And, and their feelings were against what God had plans so but they all worked out for for good in the long run i see god's hand in it that he takes a person of less than sterling character joseph at this time uh, there were things he did that he did that did not endear him to his brothers of course he was being the favorite of his father that's something he couldn't really control but uh, when he was out shepherding the flock, he came and gave his father a report. And as I understand the text, this report was kind of a slanderous report. Uh, and that didn't endear him to his brothers, plus the dreams. And, uh, but you see later on in his life, how the things that happened to him helped change uh, and God helped change him into a person of much better character. 
and uh, and believe. So God can work with anyone, and uh, if we'll just let Him, He works with us. Amen. He He works with those who work with Him, and uh, I'm <clears throat> I'm trying to picture all of this too. Here, Joseph is 17 years old. Well, what we would call today a teenager. And his brothers were obviously older. And you're probably right. That didn't set well and wasn't wise on his part. Um, there was a, in this particular translation, I don't see it now. It was kind of talking about Joseph who told them about the dream. And it uh, <clears throat> kind of had a implied that he shouldn't have. He should have been wiser than to tell him that, but it was a dream from God. So I'm sure at 17, he was excited about it and uh, willing to share that with everybody. I it think is. the idea that he would, that we are tested. Joseph was tested time and time again. And every time he was tested, he became stronger. And when he became stronger, good things happened to him. So I think we have to, or we have comfort in realizing that we too will be tested. But if we pass the test, like Joseph did, we will become much stronger. Yeah. Amen. One of the things that I, I thought about when I was reading that is, be sure your sins will find you out. They were really, uh, had a conspiracy lie, told their father a lie. Their father believed it. And uh, don't you know that uh, the father, uh, reading that story, they caused their father an awful lot of grief, but they wanted to be sure that they kept this quiet, that there was no knowledge of it. And uh, you think about how long uh, Israel, Jacob, grieved over Joseph all those years. Yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, and we see news reports nowadays, somebody on the news or whatever child is missing and they they wait years and years and they, they search and they always seem to have hope, but it just breaks their heart. Uh, but you're right. Your sins will find you out. That's a, that's a, that's a good point. It's not, not in this life and next, but Reuben seemed to kind of help out his little brother. Uh, kind of, kind of had a plan to, hopefully save his life and i guess it did save his life but uh of course they had a plan they would sell sell joseph to anybody and they had a great opportunity to reframe the story or maybe uh make it seem differently in the long run so so well, very interesting in jacob's mind uh, joseph was dead mm -hmm. uh in his mind he he was dead yeah uh, but it's interesting when he was telling the uh, the visions, he said his brothers were in verse 11, his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. And, uh, you know, that sort of reminds me of what uh, uh, the scripture tells us about Mary after Jesus had stayed in Jerusalem and, and he told her these things. She, she kept these things in her mind. And uh, he, uh, but if you look at this, you can't see that Joseph realized that God was with him in this. And it's not over till you get over into chapter 39, where it says, and the Lord was with Joseph. But we can see it looking back. And that's the advantage that we have. Right. Kevin? Yes, Wiley. You might also think about Reuben, he's the one that he's the firstborn of the group. So he's older and probably a little more wiser than the others. And uh, he wanted to kind of protect Joseph because he was close to his father as well as Joseph was. Right. He was he was a he was a brother's keeper. <laughs> looking out for him he was trying to make things work out for good the best he could 
Anything else stand out to you guys? Just, just thinking about this, if all we had to, uh, if all we knew about Joseph is what we read in this chapter, uh, we wouldn't really have a very good picture of, of Joseph. And to me, it's, it's kind of interesting the, to think, you know, maybe there's a little bit of a lesson in here about not giving up on people. It just, it takes us a long time to develop. It took, it took extraordinary circumstances and, and a period of years for, for Joseph to, to develop to the point that he was uh, at the time of his father's death. So uh, maybe there's a little lesson on being patient with people. Amen. That's, uh, <clears throat> God never gives up on people and we shouldn't either. We should, we should be patient. The little hashtags that I've decided that were kind of topics in this section were favoritism. Uh, we have to be careful with that because everybody in a family is important. Everybody is important in a church. Uh, we have to do the best we can to, to be fair. Uh, so, and favoritism can destroy a family or a church or an individual. Uh, the other one is jealousy. What God calls us to is what he calls us to. <laughs> he might bless somebody else with a better position or a, uh, more influence or one thing or another. We have to realize that, that God has given them the gift or the place and not be jealous of them. <clears throat> and then I think also forgiveness to kind of go along with what what Mike said there is we have to be patient with people and know that God, God's not finished with any of us yet. And he has hope for all of us. Anything else stand out to you guys? <clears throat> Okie doke. Well, let's,